The iPhone 13 will completely cancel Facebook. At least, that's what Apple's trying to do. Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp are all fine apps on the surface, but they collect so much of your personal info that Apple is very bothered, and they want to not only crack down on those bad behaving apps, but really, I think, get rid of them from their devices altogether. So what's the deal with Apple versus Facebook? Are you gonna have to start to pay to use Instagram and Facebook on your iPhone? Are you gonna have to switch to Android altogether if you wanna keep using those apps? Seems far-fetched, but it's not so crazy these days. This is everything you need to know about Apple versus Facebook and how everything is about to change. And a huge thanks to Ohai for sponsoring this video. In case you didn't know, Apple and Facebook are sort of sworn enemies at this point. The two companies do not like each other at all. And it could be argued that Apple, or I guess more specifically Tim Cook, has talked more about privacy and has been more critical about Facebook and sort of its shady business dealings than any of its other competitors like Microsoft, Samsung, Google. When was the last time you really heard Apple talk about Android? Apple is sort of going all in on this attack on Facebook and the two companies are butting heads now more than ever before. And if you're sort of out of the loop on this whole Apple versus Facebook feud, let me quickly catch you up to speed as to why these two companies are so at odds because they really aren't in the same space. Facebook isn't making phones or computers. Apple really isn't in the whole social network game. So what is the beef between Apple and Facebook and Tim Cook versus Mark Zuckerberg? Well, specifically, it all has to do with Apple's firm stance on privacy. Apple has taken a more conscious effort over the past few years to really double down on the privacy safety and security of the iPhone and the iPad and every device in the Apple ecosystem as a whole. They wanna give users more control over their information and really just make sure that the photos you take on your iPhone are safe and secure until you choose to share them. Or as you browse the web on your iPad, you're not being tracked along the way and you're not being served ads based off of what you do in an app or what you're looking up on a website. Apple is just trying to be very privacy conscious and Facebook is not doing that at all. In fact, they're kind of doing the opposite. See, Facebook is in the people business. They wanna collect as much personal information about you, me, my friends, my family members, your friends and family members, basically all of their users, they wanna collect as much information as possible and sort of use that information against their own users, which I know sounds a little harsh, but it is kind of true if you boil everything down into simple terms. See, Facebook wants to know everything about you. They wanna know your likes, your dislikes, your hobbies, your interests, they wanna know what websites you visit, what movies you like to see, where you are. They wanna know as much personal info about you because they can basically use that information to build up a very detailed, a very lucrative profile about you that they can use to target you with those creepy, good, very specific ads, which they can make money off of or even sell that information to third-party brokers and companies. There is a lot that Facebook knows about me, you, and millions of other people around the world, and it's scary just how much they not only know, but how much they are trying to collect every single day. And obviously many people, probably even some of you watching this video, are becoming increasingly more and more frustrated with this constant sort of uh, attention from Facebook, having tabs kept on every little thing you do, someone always trying to see what you're doing. Many just want sort of a safe haven, a company that values privacy and transparency, and someone to sort of put a stop to this unnecessary tracking. And that's where Apple comes in. They're sort of looking to give users the privacy they want, and they're looking to take Facebook head on and really challenge them on every little thing that they do and try to put a stop to this on Apple devices. Now, Apple has added a number of significant security and privacy features to iOS and macOS and iPadOS and other Apple hardware and software services over the past couple of years, but probably the biggest, if not the single biggest addition that really kind of sent shockwaves through the industry and sort of started to change the game was with iOS 14 and this new feature called App Tracking Transparency. Three simple words that have a really big meaning, which I think can actually be best explained by Hair Force One himself. App tracking transparency gives users the choice of whether they want to be tracked across apps and websites. Essentially, this little prompt really changes the power dynamics between users and companies, basically giving you as the user much more power, control, and obviously transparency on when this app is uh, trying to track you or when it's not trying to track you, and you kind of have control on what you want to allow uh, to happen or not. And many companies like Facebook, 
know that once users are presented with that crystal clear choice in their face, are going to probably choose to not have the app track them, a small, seemingly innocent press of a button could send shockwaves through different industries and could potentially cost Facebook specifically billions and billions of dollars. And in response to this, some apps have changed their underlying technology to better comply. Some apps have tried to plead their case as to why this should be allowed. And some, like Facebook, have sort of started to make these vague threats, suggesting that users should keep this tracking on if they want Facebook apps to remain free to use, suggesting that if you don't allow this to happen, not only would you be punished in a sense, but you could start to have to pay to use Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp. It's a little unclear if Facebook would ever do this, but I certainly would not be surprised. But see, that is just the beginning because now what we have with iOS 15, and what will likely come with the iPhone 13 this fall, is a number of significant new features that double down on privacy even more and make Facebook less and less powerful. The first is the app privacy report, which essentially breaks down how many times a specific app has tried to use the different permissions you have granted it. So how many times did that app try to use uh, my location? How many times did it try to access my camera and microphone and my photo library? And how many times did it try to access different parts of uh, my phone? You can see all that in the app privacy report, as well as the specific domain names an app is trying to contact. So you can sort of better see the data flow between your information and a given app and who that app is trying to phone home to so you can kind of better be informed on who the app is contacting and who is trying to get potentially some of your data. The other big feature here is iCloud Private Relay, which sort of works like a VPN where it kind of tunnels your traffic through a virtual private network to sort of anonymize who you are and your location and IP address and stuff like that. But it's a little bit more complex than that. Essentially, if I understand this correctly, there are multiple links in this chain, specifically an ingress proxy, which knows where you came from, but not where you're going and an egress proxy, which knows where you're trying to go, but not where you came from. Essentially, all these different links in the chain work together to anonymize your information and to allow you to seamlessly go from point A to point B, but not allow the website on the other end to know you're the same person who's on uh, site C and site D and has site E open in a tab over there, basically not allowing the websites and the different website technologies to track you and serve you ads and collect this information because your information is private, safe, and secure through this private relay network. Obviously, this is bad news for data brokers, companies that use different web technologies to track you around the web. And yes, of course, the common thread in this whole video, it is bad news for Facebook as well, because when you have, for lack of a better word, this VPN at a base system level, and because Safari traffic is going through it, and because some app traffic is going through it as well, it's a lot harder for Facebook and other companies to sort of combat this virtual private network from the base level. And then now potentially, Facebook could get a lot less info about you because they just can't track you around the web and see every little thing that you're doing. Before we continue more with this feud and this whole Apple versus Facebook drama, let's talk about something a little bit more exciting and a little bit more fun. And that is an awesome product from this video sponsor, Ohai. This is the Ohai MagCube 30 watt. It is the world's smallest 30 watt PD charger that's powered by some of the latest and greatest GAN Plus technology that makes it not only small, but also incredibly powerful and super efficient. And when I say the MagCube is small and portable, I mean, this thing really is small and portable. In fact, this 30 watt PD charger is the same size as Apple's puny five watt brick. But unlike Apple's puny little puck, the MagCube rapidly charges devices with up to six times more power and up to three times faster than normal five watt chargers. It's also got USB-C on it as well, which is a wonderful addition to see. There is a whole lot to love about the Mag Cube, but one of my favorite features of all is the indicator light built in that lets you see at a glance the speed in which your devices are charging. I really love the Mag Cube 30 watt from Ohai. Not only does it look great, not only does it have USB-C, but it can charge up all your devices, laptops, phones, tablets, headphones, uh, Nintendo Switch. It can charge up all your tech devices and is super portable super small and super powerful. And it's just awesome to see all this technology in something this small. It's super awesome. I know you guys are gonna love it. You gotta check it out for yourself today and pick one up for yourself. If you wanna learn more, pick up the MagCube 30 watt from Ohio. Hit that link right down below to learn more.
What I think is most interesting about this whole thing, this whole Apple versus Facebook feud, is that Apple has to walk a very fine line. Because on one hand, you do have plenty of people who willingly sign up for Facebook. They accept the terms and conditions. They're okay, knowingly or not, giving away this personal information. And they're okay going into the Facebook app and being tracked and having their data uh, searched and used and stuff like that. They're okay with that because they wanna use Facebook, they wanna use this free service, and privacy is just not important to them. And Apple has to allow them to use the app and not restrict functionality and just allow them to sort of live their life and use Facebook on Apple devices. And we could argue all day, who needs who more? Does Apple need Facebook more? Does Facebook need Apple more? We could debate that all day. But what I think is so interesting here is Apple's approach. Now, they're gonna allow people to go into the Facebook app and use the app to sign up, to browse through the newsfeed, to use Instagram, to message on WhatsApp. But what they're starting to do is sort of attack them almost from the outside in. They're sort of trying to break all the links in the chain from the outside and restrict as much as they can to sort of limit the functionality more and more of these apps. Facebook still works as a normal app. You can still browse everything you want. Facebook can still collect everything in their own Facebook owned apps but they can't track you on other apps. They can't track you around the web. Users now know how many times Facebook is trying to get access to their location or their camera roll or contacts. Facebook is trying to kind of, you know, make all this uh, sort of go away and collect as much info as possible. But Apple is trying to make every part of this process, every link in this chain more and more transparent until apparently they're hoping maybe eventually people will just get so fed up of the info collected from them, from Facebook and others, that they'll just delete the app altogether. Maybe that's what Apple wants, maybe it's not what they want, but it is super interesting to see this sort of shift in power dynamic and to see Apple and Facebook just kind of go all out in this sort of all out war. So what are your thoughts on this? Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? Does Apple have the right to limit uh, Facebook's functionality and their ad tracking technology inside of the Facebook app, outside of the Facebook app? Is Apple doing the right thing with iCloud private relay and app tracking transparency? Or do you think that Facebook should be allowed to collect this information? Do you think if an app is downloaded on a phone and because a user signs up for these services, that Apple shouldn't get in the way of this tracking happening and this data being collected? I'm curious, what are your thoughts? Such an interesting, fascinating, complex issue. Uh, I'm curious to hear where you stand. Let me know in the comments down below. So always, thank you guys so much for watching The Apple Circle. I really appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I will see you in the next one.